Was Muhammad a pedophile? Modern Muslim scholars would say no, but the most trusted reference manual on mental disorders, the DSM-5, says he was. We'll give you the detailed diagnosis. If the idea that an old man is marrying a very, very, very young girl is something that will prompt you to think there is something wrong with this man, then my question is this, was Muhammad a pedophile? David, what say you? Oh, yes. So we can, fin we can end the video there if you want. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the answer. Uh, yes, but this is actually, this is actually, interestingly, people think I'm super mean. You can go back to articles and so on and talks I gave from like 10 or 12 years ago where I was actually telling Christians that we shouldn't call Muhammad a pedophile because even though there's a common usage of the term where we say, you know, hey, he's attracted to little girls or something like that, he's a pedophile or something like that, there's a specific psychological definition for the term pedophile. And I had seen uh, psychologists who defined pedophile as someone who is exclusively attracted to prepubescent children. And so, I mean, if you've read the Muslim sources, Muhammad was not exclusively attracted to prepubescent children. He was attracted to, I mean, women and girls of, of seemingly all ages. And so I was, you know, I was honest enough to say, hey, if this definition doesn't actually fit, then we shouldn't be using this term because it's, it's just not accurate. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said back then. But notice, even though there were psychologists who defined pedophile as someone who's exclusively attracted to prepubescent children, notice we, we still want to say that there's something wrong with someone who's attracted to kids at all. Like even if the person is attracted to grown women, if you're also attracted to prepubescent children, to prepubescent girls or prepubescent boys, you have a, you have a, you have a problem. There's something wrong with you. So what's going on there? Well, fortunately, fortunately, now we have, now we have the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, also called the DSM-5. This is the, you're familiar with this, this is the standard, is yes. this or not, this is the standard work right now in diagnosing mental disorders. Absolutely, and this is the latest edition because the one that I even studied before was the DSM-4. Mm -hmm. But they have done some modifications here to some definitions. Yeah, so this is this is the standard work right now for diagnosing mental disorders, and they 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 give the criteria for a mental uh, for a mental disorder, and if you check the boxes, and you got you got a problem. So we're going to go ahead and and read the criteria mm -hmm. for someone with pedophilic disorder, someone who, someone who is a pedophile. Uh, but before we do, let's just recap the Muslim sources saying that Muhammad was sexually active with a prepubescent girl. So let's go back to these. Um, in a previous video, we read Sahil Bukhari 6130, narrated Aisha, I used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the prophet would call them to join and play with me. So Aisha and her friends are playing with dolls in Muhammad's presence. Any Muslim who's reading that would, would wonder immediately why she was allowed to play with dolls when dolls are images and images are forbidden. But we have the solution right here. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. So she was a little girl, hadn't reached puberty. Let's read another passage from Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim 33, 11, Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine and her dolls were with her. And when he, the Holy Prophet, died, she was 18 years old. Why was she allowed to play with dolls? As we've seen, uh, dolls are images, but 
it was still allowed if you hadn't reached puberty, you hadn't reached the age of moral accountability, so they let children play with dolls. And as we've seen uh, also in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, number 5153, uh, he ties it all together with what the Quran says, uh, but notice the chapter heading, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. So this is talking about giving children, and we're, we're, we're recapping this for a reason, we're about to read the definition of someone with pedophilic disorder. Giving one's young children in marriage is permissible by virtue of the statement of Allah. And for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature. So this is talking about sex with girls who have no monthly course. They, they don't have a, a monthly menstrual cycle. And it's talking about divorcing them after having sex with them. And it says that the idda, the waiting period for the girl, so the waiting period uh, before she can get married again after her husband divorces her, the girl before puberty. So this is clearly and indisputably talking about prepubescent girls, girls who haven't reached the age of puberty. So you marry a girl, divorce her, then she has to wait three months before she can marry another guy, all before she's reached the age of puberty. She can be married multiple times all before she's reached puberty. And the quotation they give to illustrate this is about Muhammad and Aisha. So Muhammad and Aisha are supposedly examples of marrying and having sex with a prepubescent girl. So narrated Aisha that the prophet, the prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. So we've got multiple layers of issues here. So in order to get away from this this issue, Muslims will say, ah, she wasn't nine, um, she was older. Um, we've seen, no, that doesn't work, she was, she was nine. Then they'll say, ah, but she had reached puberty. No nope, problem there, she hadn't reached puberty. But then they'll say, well, yeah, it doesn't mean he was a pedophile. Well, let's go ahead and read the, the definition. Pedophilic disorder, according to the DSM-5. Here are the criteria. A, over a period of at least six months, Recurrent, intense, sexually arousing fantasies, sexual urges, or behaviors involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child or children, generally age 13 years or younger. So it says, uh, if you're having sexual activity with a prepubescent child or children, age 13 or younger. So yep. that's a check for Muhammad. A he was check, and also he was much longer than uh, six months. At least it says oh, yes. she was mm -hmm. six. Mm -hmm. consummated nine, he has three years to think about it. And uh, yeah, so uh, notice it's all the way up until 13. So yeah, he, he really just crushes that one. B, the individual has acted on these sexual urges or the sexual urges or fantasies cause uh, marked distress or interpersonal difficulty. Doesn't seem to cause him distress, but the first part of that, the individual has acted on these sexual urges. Uh, he certainly has. And C, the individual is at least 16 years old and at least five years older than the child or children in criterion A. So you have to, so in other words, they're not talking about a 13 year old who's attracted to a 12 year old or something like that. They're talking about someone who's, uh, who's an adult who's attracted to, uh, a little, a little girl or a little boy. So well, Muhammad was in his fifties. 45 years older than her when at least she was six years of age, has three years to think about it, married her when he was at least at age 54. So he was f uh, basically, that's a 45 years uh -huh. difference between the two. So here he, you have to be at least five years older. He was 45 years older. So he's right. just crushing, he's just crushing these diagnostic criteria. But then after, and those are the criteria. So you have pedophilic disorder if you meet these criteria. So according to the DSM-5, Muhammad had pedophilic disorder, i.e. he is a pedophile. But then they say you, you're supposed to, as a, as a psychologist diagnosing this disorder, you're supposed to specify because there are different types of the disorder. You're supposed to specify whether it's exclusive type, that's someone who's attracted only to children, or non-exclusive type. So you're attracted to children and uh, and other and non-children. And then you specify whether it's attracted to males or attracted to females or attracted to both. And you can specify if it's incestuous. Some people are attracted to uh, their, their own children or their, their own uh, young relatives. So notice what we would say based on the DSM-5. 
Mm -hmm. This is the latest, most up-to-date, authoritative source on diagnosing mental health disorders. We would say that Muhammad has non-exclusive type pedophilic disorder right. and that he is, according to the DSM-5, a pedophile. So the answer, according to psychology, is yes, he's a pedophile. What are the chances we're going to hear that this DSM-5 is corrupt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they're going to wage jihad on, <laughs> on psychology. <laughs> and now the sales of the DSM-5 just skyrocketed. So we do our part. Well, thank you, brother. I mean, it can't get any clearer than this. And I hope everyone is tracking with us. And if any of you are in the field of psychology or mental health, please feel free to comment and let us know if we misrepresented anything in here. And uh, disregard the idea of Muhammad, just talk about it. Generically speaking, is there anything that David just mentioned written in that reference book uh, that is misrepresented or misquoted or it doesn't apply in this case? To the rest of you, well, I pray that you will never deal with an issue like this, especially for you young women. You don't have to deal with issues like this, I hope. Because indeed, if you are disturbed, I agree with you. It is absolutely disturbing, especially coming from someone who is considered to be the model for mankind. If this is the model for mankind, well, maybe we have picked the wrong model to follow. Jesus is the answer. And I hope you come to him. Thank you so much for following us. We are not done yet. There is more to come. This is Al-Fadi. Thank you and God bless. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.